This battle over the Second Amendment, essentially, regarding the assault weapons ban, could go either way as of this article, which is the 11th of January, 2013. Good morning, folks. This is The Main Prepper, and today I'm going to share with you my analysis and some of my opinion on the current debate or current battle uh, against the Second Amendment or over the Second Amendment, however way you want to propose or um, say it. And this is just my opinion that I'm sharing today, or my analysis. In no way am I advocating a course of action. In no way am I uh, trying to get you to vote one way or the other, although I do encourage you to vote. I do encourage you to contact uh, your local representatives, for that is how our uh, democratic processes work, is that they need to hear from their constituents. If they hear nothing, uh, they will presume that the voices they hear uh, from the media and others are representative of you and that you're in agreement. However, uh, you have a great chance, if you don't agree with that, to make contact. And they do listen. Uh, I know because I've read the commentary below. And I'm hearing people say, yes, they're responding. This article I'm going to share with you this morning is brilliant. And this is by Kimberly Strassel uh, from the Wall Street Journal. And I'm not going to share the whole article with you. I'm going to share a snippet. I encourage you, uh, after we get done with the video, to go over, and there will be a link below in the comments section, uh, where you can have a look at this article. It's wonderful, and read the whole thing. I will not share the best part of the article. Uh, that you can go read for yourself. I will share instead a couple of snippets uh, that I think you'll enjoy to get you to go read it. So let's talk about this. Okay, uh, she talks about there's a disconnect in here uh, politically going on. And one of the things uh, is essentially uh, the political sphere uh, essentially has gone uh, very polar. And on one side, the gun, community, gun control community uh, has sniffed a, quote, rare political opportunity opening and is determined to use it to the max. Vice President Joe Biden's gun violence task force has given that community, the anti-gun, uh, a vehicle for its ambitions, even as it has encouraged it to ramp up its demands. I want to park on that for just a second. At the forefront of this rather um, high-handed approach uh, to the assault weapons ban has been Senator Dianne Feinstein, who has reintroduced her old assault weapons ban bill. Uh, this time it's been to the gym for about 10 years, and it's been on steroids and taking performance-enhancing drugs. It's no longer uh, the kid that can bench press 225 pounds. Uh, it's now turned into a man-eating gorilla uh, that can snap barbells in half. This thing is is beyond uh, the assault weapons ban. It essentially would encompass every semi-automatic weapon out there because by virtue of the fact uh, that it could be seen as having a, quote, uh, military characteristic, which is still undefined, as well as the capacity to hold a large capacity magazine, which is defined by her as 10 rounds, more than 10 round ammunition feeding device. That means clip magazine or uh, uh, gunny sack, whatever you can find that'll feed bullets into a weapon. They've been very careful and very clever about nailing this down. And so if it passes, it'll pretty much be uh, taking in a vast majority of the weapons that are out there, unless they're really, really old or there's some old bolt action gun. Even those uh, can suspiciously fall under if they have a military characteristic, uh, which is nothing more than a cosmetic feature. We'll talk about that in just a second, uh, but this represents overreach. Now, uh, at first, overreach is great if you think you're going to win, but overreach is not good if the matter is up for debate, because essentially it makes your uh, proposal unacceptable to not just the people that have always been against you, but to the people in the middle whose support you really need. Senator Feinstein, Cuomo, and Bloomberg are all from very much uh, safe anti-gun districts. What I mean by that, uh, it's not that they're a safe place to live. In fact, I would argue they're not, uh, according to crime statistics, but uh, they're safe for them to run on a very uh, rabidly anti-gun agenda, just as it's uh, very uh, possible for some other places to be safe to be pro-gun. Uh, and they can be even rabidly pro-gun because guess what? If your constituents are that way, they expect you to be the same. They do not tolerate, uh, if you are in a pro-gun state and you stand up and you start uh, spewing anti-gun rhetoric, your constituents are going to send you home. This happened right after the 1994 assault weapons ban when uh, 32 incumbent uh, Democrat congressmen voted uh, in favor of the assault weapons ban of 1994. 29 
29 of the 32 lost their seats in the next election over this one issue. Uh, that's because pro-gun folks tend to be uh, single-issue voters. And uh, this is pretty much the situation we're seeing today. There's a problem now. Essentially, the uh, pro-gun, or rather the anti-gun side, has ridden the tiger. And now the tiger, uh, they can't get off. And so they're going to ride it to the end, and they're going to play this out to the bitter end. They're going to fight this one down to the wire. That means, uh, even though they know there's a chance they'll lose, uh, they're going to go for it. They're going to throw all their chips on the table. And that's why uh, they're becoming increasingly vitriolic. That's why they're becoming increasingly desperate. That's why even the personal comments you'll read after these articles that are posted up here uh, on the internet are increasingly nasty uh, and they're full of name calling and vicious, uh, disgustingly uh, over the top hyperbole. Uh, that's okay. Uh, let them do that. By the way, uh, if you're pro-gun, that works to your advantage because if you remain, uh, as I've seen, uh, the one that's being calm, level-headed, and presenting facts, figures, logic, and data, uh, you're winning people over uh, by those actions. Those are always uh, the things that I encourage. I encourage you to always uh, do the right thing. Never uh, allow your behavior to be guided by the idea that it's more important to win than it is to do the right thing. Always uh, do the right thing. For you cannot get to the right destination by taking a wrong turn. So please uh, continue, regardless of which side you stand on, uh, do the right thing. Stand up and do what is right. And you know what is right. 99% of you should know what right looks like. Treat others as you would wish to be treated yourself is one of them. All right. Uh, by this week, the elites were calling for a gun control agenda unmatched in modern times. The closing of the gun show Loophole, uh, restrictions on large capacity clips. This is her article I'm reading from, uh, the second best part. The, an assault weapons ban, uh, they want all that, plus a national gun database now, and a background check for every gun sale, and a similar check for every ammunition sale, and regulation of internet transactions, uh, and Michael Bloomberg, crowned emperor. The last one's a joke by her. Very good, very funny, I like it. A uh, position for which Mr. Bloomberg no doubt believes himself suited. The media have reported all this as rational, as reasonable, and doable. She goes on to say later uh, that they then try to report that there's a paradigm shift occurring within the Congress and the Senate. That more and more pro-gun senators and congressmen are coming over to the idea of the assault weapons ban. Well, that is a blatant lie by them. Uh, and that's the New York Times and Huffington Post and the rest. This is deliberate disinformation. They're trying to stampede people, just like they do with these gun buybacks, when they say, oh, look at all the people that have turned in all of these high-dollar assault weapons. You should do the same for $200. And I look at that and I think, really? Well, I know what they're doing. Uh, they're going out and they're taking some of the money for the gun buyback program, and they're going uh, outside of their area, and they're buying very high-end, quote, assault weapons, and then they're bringing them back and having their people turn them in because it's anonymous. Uh, you don't have to say who you are. They turn them in, and these are the weapons that wind up on these tables. And that's why you look at these if you're a gun owner and you have an, an incredulous look. You go, really? Somebody turned in a $5,000 rifle for $200? What? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Well, it does if you understand that they went out and bought that gun uh, with gun buyback money, and they turned it in to sort of prime the pump uh, to get the stampede going. And that's what they're trying to do here when they report uh, these so-called pro-gun senators and congressmen that have changed their attitude about this, and they've decided. Well, I did a little careful study of some of these when they pop up, and guess what? Every single time uh, they uh, present one of these to us, they never were really all that pro-gun. Sure, he was all in favor of duck hunting. Well, that's not really a pro-Second Amendment. Uh, that just means uh, you're, a, you, you're in favor of it being interpreted uh, the way the anti-gun people want to interpret it, which essentially means you're not uh, really a pro-gun senator or congressman. It means you're pretty much anti-gun. You just like uh, for people to leave your gun alone, but you don't mind if they take someone else's away. Kind of like some people don't mind uh, taking away someone else's uh, natural right uh, and then demanding that their natural right be left alone. I did a video on this yesterday on Piers Morgan, and essentially uh, it looks hypocritical when you say, uh, listen, this is a natural right. Uh, it's not granted by government, therefore government can't take it away. And then you turn around and you say, but this guy over here, it's not a natural right because he's not an American citizen. 
Well, wait a minute. If it's a natural right, it belongs to everyone. You see, Americans aren't the only ones that get rights in this world. And if you have that attitude, I would suggest uh, that you broaden your thinking a little bit because it makes you look ignorant and hypocritical uh, to talk about natural rights and say they only apply to American citizens. Uh, they actually apply to every human being. And if you're not willing to recognize them in one person, don't be surprised when people turn around and won't recognize yours either. And that's a debate we should have later on uh, about this whole thing about people uh, using the, uh, the Bill of Rights like it's a cafeteria menu and picking and choosing the ones that they are going to support and the ones that they're going to deny others. The fact is, uh, if you're not willing to grant them all to everyone else, you will get none of them back yourself from the same people. And uh, at the end of the day, though, it's all going to be decided by the Supreme Court of the United States. However, if you want to ha avoid having to go back to court uh, to defend your natural rights, it might be good if you lighten up a little bit. All right, back to the article. Despite the press's exuberant efforts to cast congressional gun supporters as having changed their minds, there's been no actual movement, and I agree with that completely. Uh, there's no actual movement here. There's no actual movement in the American public either. Uh, whenever they do one of these opinion polls that says 89% of the American people are in favor of a gun ban, actually, that's like a Huffington Post uh, poll where they went out uh, to a very anti-gun area and asked them. Well, okay, sure they did. Uh, that's like going to a place where everybody rides horses and they say, yeah, everybody, 89% uh, of the people here are against automobiles. Well, that's because they ride horses uh, everywhere. So uh, this is not news. And by the way, it's not accurate either. And it's designed all uh, to try to affect a paradigm shift. You can affect a paradigm shift, though, uh, by telling the truth and by being accurate and by standing your ground uh, calmly and resolutely and delivering uh, your opinions in as reticent, uh, accurate, and articulate a fashion as you can muster. That's going to uh, do more to make a paradigm shift, a shift in opinion and attitude than anything else. You can initially uh, get people to do a shift uh, by fear-mongering, and you can get them to do an initial shift uh, by lying and skewing in, uh, data. But at the end of the day, when the truth comes out, uh, as usually is spoken by the calm and articulate one, you're going to find uh, that you had a temporary uh, stampede uh, that went back against you. And this is uh, where things could go if the pro-gun crowd does a couple of things. And this is just my prediction. If the pro-gun crowd uh, continues to contact their representatives uh, on a regular and routine basis and to speak articulately about the facts and to present uh, relevant data uh, to the issue at hand, that's going to do uh, a lot for your cause. The second one is, is when you're talking to people, whether it's up on the internet or anywhere else, uh, that you present yourself, uh, continue to do so in the rational fashion in which you have uh, facts, figures, data, and not responding uh, to the vile insults out there with similar, that means living comments like libtard, commie, pinko, all that out of your uh, rhetoric and sticking strictly uh, to things that are at hand. That doesn't mean you can't get sharp with them and say, well, that's because, uh, like all tyrants, uh, you favor gun control. That's okay to say that, uh, but it's not okay to just start spewing uh, hyperbole-laden, uh, pejorative statements. Uh, for instance, uh, calling somebody a communist, socialist, fascist, uh, libertarian, pinko, whatever, uh, those are all kind of contradictory uh, in many regards, terms, and it makes you look rather foolish uh, when you say that. You start to sound like a bumper sticker instead of a rational human being. So uh, these are ways that I see uh, the pro-gun crowd is winning the day. And the other thing, of course, uh, is going to be, at the end of the day, the Supreme Court of the United States is not going to uh, allow there to be a, uh, an executive order that essentially overturns the Second Amendment or so infringes it as to make it irrelevant. And that is uh, this problem they're going to have on the anti-gun side. Essentially, the leadership now have promised a lot of things, and now they're going to have to try to deliver. That is why they're going to approach uh, with a sort of reckless confidence uh, this issue. That's because the ones pushing it have nothing to lose. Bloomberg, Feinstein, Cuomo, uh, their constituents love this sort of behavior. The New York Times, Huffington Post, and the other news organs you see uh, screaming all of this anti 
anti-gun rhetoric out there, well, guess what? Uh, their constituents like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Don't let the screaming and the thundering of horse hoofs uh, frighten you, uh, for it's not a million uh, chariots coming to run you down. It's simply somebody with a boombox uh, and a recording of their, uh, the same. Folks, this has been the main prepper. Uh, I encourage you, whatever your beliefs and positions are, that you vote your conscience, you vote your values, and that you respect uh, the rights of others, uh, just as you insist rightly on yours being respected and honored the same. Thank you.